is a recording of this year's virtual residency fair. We'd like to take the time to thank the programs that volunteered their time to present to this year's applicants. This year's PMNR Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by PMNR Recap and Ultrasound Guidance. PMNR Recap is the leading resource for your physiatry board preparation, clinical preparation, audition rotations, and beyond. PMNR Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and oral board cases to help you become the best physiatrist that you can be. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. Ultrasound Guidance is the innovative new on online ultrasound learning platform that gives you instant access to expert instruction. With rapid scans and complete scans of every joint and peripheral nerve, Ultrasound Guidance is the perfect way to jumpstart your MSK ultrasound learning. Visit ultrasoundguidance.com to learn more. All right. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, my name is Scott Flam. I'm the academic chief at Baylor right now. And with me here is, is Danny Briggy, who also the admin chief at Baylor. And today we give you a little bit highlight about our program uh, at Baylor College of Medicine uh, in Houston, Texas. Uh, just a little bit about the program uh, rotation side. Uh, so we rotate at uh, first at Baylor McNair, which is located right down at the uh, TMC, Texas Medical Center. Here we got the MSK and sport uh, rotation outpatients. Uh, we also have the dedicated pain and spy rotation there as well, where the resident are able to work uh, in the uh, floral suite, uh, see the patient there as well, able to go to the ORs as well. Uh, we also have a console service, uh, which is also in this rotation, but also we go to the Baylor St. Luke, uh, also in Texas Medical Center to do a general console rehab over there as well. Uh, the next rotation side that we have is the Michael E. Becky, uh, which is the uh, one of the main uh, <clears throat> rotation side that we have here with Baylor, uh, which is a dedicated side that we're going to do uh, EMG over there, uh, general inpatient rehab. Uh, right now we have a model of a senior junior, so you're going to have a senior and junior on, on the general inpatient rehab usually. Uh, and we also have a dedicated outpatient MSK and SPI clinic over there. Uh, we also have VA selective. Right now, we dedicated that uh, rotation into getting the resident become more comfortable with using ultra cell guided injections, as well as opportunity to work in floral and oral suite as well. Uh, of course, we also have a uh, spinal cord injury uh, inpatient rehab unit there as well, where the resident able to rotate three months long and spending the time to taking care of the veteran that with the spinal cord injury there. And uh, next, uh, Rosai is uh, we have we rotate with the Texas Children's Hospital as well. Here we have a dedicated inpatient re pediatric rehab uh, unit. Uh, we are in the process of expanding that as well, uh, and we have a very high volume over there. Uh, so if um, you get interested in pediatric uh, uh, rehab, uh, this is a very good uh, place to rotate at. Uh, we also have a dedicated MSK in sport uh, outpatient as well. Uh, we uh, uh, have that uh, rotation give, give a little bit of travel around Houston uh, because of a different campus around Houston. But uh, usually with the uh, driving distance uh, from the messenger around like 20 minutes max. Uh, we also had an outpatient uh, PDA rehab unit. This one is actually located right uh, at the uh, TMC Texas Medical Center as well. Of course, we also have the uh, tier, uh, rotate at tier, uh, which is a uh, one of the main side that we do inpatient rehab uh, over there. Uh, as a Baylor resident, we are required to rotate there uh, at this uh, five time. Uh, we're gonna go through the brain injury, uh, general neuro rehab, and uh, spinal cord injury uh, over there. And a little bit of the academic highlight from our program. Uh, we have a dedicated every Thursday uh, from eight to one o'clock for dedicated for didactic. This is a uh, faculty lead and resident organized, and we share this with the uh, UT colleague as well. So me, the academic team Baylor, and uh, uh, the academic team UT will be the one that uh, coming up with uh, the uh, who going to come to speak with us. And usually, the faculty that uh, come to us is very uh, expert in their specialty and uh, able to give us a very good lectures during these didactic time. Uh, lecture and slide from these faculty will be uh, available online afterward uh, if uh, the resident requests. And this is a 12-month cycle, so we divide into block. And uh, right now, currently, uh, we're in the um, brain injury block right now. And uh, we basically uh, 
rotate to on the topic of uh, relevant to PMNR. Uh, and we also have decade workshop with the three decade workshop right now. Uh, the main two, the two established one is the anatomy course workshop, which is about 10 hours uh, over the five weeks in the winter, where we go into the cadaver lab at the Baylor College of Medicine's uh, cadaver lab. And we learn about the anatomy that are relevant to uh, BMNR. We also have Botox core as well. There's also a uh, host uh, for uh, 10 hours over the three day in spring. Usually we bring in the expert in, uh, in Botox injection as an ultrasound guided injection as well to teach us over there. And uh, usually we partner with the UT. So we go to the UT cadaver lab usually uh, to do uh, the study as well. Uh, and uh, currently we are developing a new ultrasound curriculum. We're starting right now in July and our first one actually is uh, two weeks from now. And we also have grand round monthly as well, uh, usually at the end of the uh, the end of the month, and it's led by actually faculty lead grand round for this one, and they also schedule the grand round for us as well. And we have very generous PTO uh, for conference attendance. Uh, if you uh, would like to participate in any conference nationally, and we're able to like, get you the PTO for, for attending those conferences. And a little bit of diversity in our resident faculty. Uh, this. Uh, Sorry, I had uh, this uh, data is actually uh, a year ago and uh, we have an update for this year that uh, where the uh, um, resident coming from yet, but we, us we usually get a lot of resident around the country. Uh, Texas, California, New York, uh, New Jersey, Louisiana, Nevada, Oklahoma. This year we also say, I think, believe in Michigan. Uh, and um, uh, we also have an international presentation as well. Myself, we actually have a history I'm from Vietnam. Uh, we also have from South Korea, Peru, Nigeria, India, Ghana. And uh, we have like over 30 clinical faculty members within the uh, department and with a very diverse background in, in a lot of clinical interests that you guys, uh, if you guys would like to uh, learn more about from them. Uh, we have also additional faculty from other sides such as uh, at Tier and Texas Children's Hospital as well. You can, can reach out as well. We have a form of mentorship assigned to the BGY2 uh, every, year, every year they're coming in based on their professional interests. And we also have informal mentorship on the side as well if uh, you want to learn more about the specialty you want to go into. And given that we're in the Texas Medical Center, uh, we have uh, opportunity to reach out to even more uh, mentor, uh, even not that Baylor, but all, all around the Texas Medical Center as well. And uh, Danny will go a little bit over a uh, fellowship and matching job placement for our program. Yeah, I think uh, as you look towards residency, it's important to understand maybe where the, the residents are going each year from these programs. And we'll touch on it sort of quickly. Okay, so. Uh, this is just an alphabetical order. It's not uh, based on recency, but from a brain injury standpoint, Harvard, JFK in Jersey, uh, Temple in Philly and Tier, uh, sort of a nice spread. Uh, cancer rehab, we've only had one in recent years, and that was uh, Michigan. AIDS rehab, uh, Texas Children's Hospital, obviously top uh, couple hospitals from a, a children's standpoint nationally. Um, Probably a decent place to stay, but Children's Mercy, University of Washington in, in Seattle, uh, and spinal cord injury, uh, Spalding as well. Uh, this slide is busy, so I apologize, but um, from a pain and sports standpoint, I think uh, for many years, knock on our program has been that there's not enough interventional exposure, interventional uh, opportunity, but I uh, tried to dispel some of that right now, just uh, with this list for pain and sports. Uh, you can see sort of good national presence from uh, UCLA in sports to uh, hospital for special surgery and uh, pain from uh, Hopkins all the way to Minnesota and Texas and Utah. So uh, pretty good spread, uh, decent opportunities to go places that you want to go. And then to some extent, uh, it's important to consider that the network, and I think Baylor, uh, in part because we have a big residency class of uh, eight residents per year, um, older program, been around since like the, the 50s or 60s, uh, you have a relatively large network with some national presence. You'll have the opportunity to uh, obviously socialize with the, the group of residents and partners that we have here, including the uh, UT group, which adds another 16 residents to be friends with, to work with, uh, to learn from, 
Uh, but again, looking around the country when it's time for fellowships or jobs, uh, there is probably a Baylor alumnus in, in most cities uh, that you're going to look at. And touched on it briefly earlier, but um, historically, pain and MSK exposure uh, might have been considered to be not great or, or not as strong. Uh, but at this point, through our county clinics, we do have bread and butter uh, musculoskeletal cases and uh, pretty high volume ultrasound rotations. At Baylor's McNair site, the pain and spine rotation, we have a spine trained doc, a mass spine trained doc from Cleveland Clinic. We have a Minnesota pain trained doc. Uh, doing sort of a, a wider breadth of more classic pain cases, including advanced neuromodulatory procedures. Uh, at McNair Sports Clinic, if you're interested in sports, it's an ultra he ultrasound heavy clinic with uh, not just the big peripheral joints of shoulders, hips, uh, and knees, but also some foot and ankle, uh, some hand and wrist as well to get a little bit more of that exposure and a little bit of diagnostic ultrasound as well. Uh, Texas Children's Musculoskeletal uh, and Sports Rotation uh, is less interventional, but it is great from a workup management standpoint uh, to get that exposure and to make sure you uh, are capable of sort of managing even without the procedures or, or thinking about who is uh, good for a referral. Uh, and then our VA has an evolving curriculum. Again, Locke touched on the selective curriculum being ultrasound and fluoroscopy heavy at this point, um, but our spine clinic also provides you a little bit of uh, sort of similar to the, the TCH, MSK, and sports, uh, to do your physical exams, to do your uh, workout management, to think about how uh, interventionally or not you're going to treat these patients. Extracurricularly, Texas Medical Center is the, the biggest medical center in the world. And I don't know, statistically speaking, uh, where that designation comes from, whether it's the most patients who are treated or whether it's just by um, sort of land, land taken up. Uh, but it's enormous. There are a number of hospital systems here and a number of opportunities to get research across the campus, including MD Anderson, including Texas Children's, uh, including Methodist, sort of across the board, and Memorial Hermann and Tier as well. Uh, we have specially interest journal, journal clubs from PEDS to sports uh, to pain and spine, uh, and we have some community or industry partners as well uh, who help to, to facilitate that. Not all of it is industry, but you have sort of both ends of the spectrum where it's the academic programs that are leading it, uh, resident led, and then you have some community partners doing so as well. Uh, resident led ultrasound training. Uh, this is something that historically uh, we've been doing a lot of sort of a Thursday morning before didactics that's evolving into more uh, formal curriculum during didactic time. But you also have machines available for self guided use practice on uh, yourself or each other at multiple rotations. And then sports coverage, uh, readily available starting early in your PGY2 year. Uh, you have contacts to reach out to across the medical center uh, and have opportunities in almost all the sports. We have heavy involvement in rugby and high school football and college athletics at Texas Southern. Um, but the opportunities are there if that's something that's interesting to you. Cancer rehab. Uh, historically, we haven't had a ton of it. You'll see some inpatients uh, at our sites from uh, St. Luke's consults, one of the rotations Locke touched on earlier, but also a tier where we're getting patients from uh, likely MD Anderson coming in for inpatient rehab between treatment or, or before treatment. Uh, it is growing from an inpatient standpoint, but it is somewhat limited. We don't have a dedicated rotation. We do have uh, Dr. Ahmed who came back from her fellowship at Michigan. She was a Baylor alum, went to Michigan and came back, opened up an outpatient practice here at uh, Baylor, and it's growing right now. So we're going to continue to see, probably by the time you all get here, uh, more outpatient cancer rehab opportunities in a way that we haven't previously. But from a mentorship and research standpoint, plenty of that is available next door uh, at Memorial Hermann, at Tier, uh, and at MD Anderson. I think probably important to touch on sort of salary and benefits briefly, just in this introductory presentation. Uh, these are the updated salary numbers. Uh, $70,000, $74,000 goes a pretty long way. And in, in Houston, I think most of us are able to live comfortably, whether we're single or whether we're living with uh, partners or roommates. Uh, everybody's, to my knowledge, doing okay. I think that 
that salary does carry pretty well when there's no state in income tax and you're presumably not paying property tax if you don't own. Um, we do, in, in my opinion, have pretty good benefits and that's subjective and not particularly intellectual, but um, dental coverage gets you four cleanings a year. Uh, healthcare has been uh, reasonably good and you have vision coverage as well. Book fund, uh, you have a couple hundred dollars each year, sort of as listed here, 150 for your PGY2 year, 250 for your three and 150 for your four. And then conferences, you have up to $2,000 across the three years. In practice, most people are taking closer to 1,500. That extra 500 is sort of a uh, discretionary, depending on how much money is available and, and what your research looks like uh, at that time. Lock touch briefly on the, the time off for us. We have three weeks of scheduled vacation. You just take those in chunks, but you also have nine days of PTO and six sick days uh, to stay within our 30 day uh, ABPM and R maximum. Those PTO days also, and lock you can stay on the side, but the PTO days can be used for things like uh, weddings or uh, trips out of town, it's it's pretty flexible in addition to just conference use. It doesn't have to be academic. And then moonlighting, I think this tends to be a pretty popular question. So um, we have an opt-in moonlighting process. It begins your PGY2 year, probably about halfway through the year once you've had time at TIER. Uh, TIER asks us to do some admissions, nights and weekends, uh, winds up being $225 for admit if it's done before, if the patient arrives before 10 p.m., $325 after 10 p.m. Uh, if you opt in, you probably get scheduled for three to five weekends per year and do a couple admits each weekend. You wind up with an extra couple thousand dollars, but you can pick up extra shifts from your colleagues who don't want them, and you can pick up weeknight admissions as you need. So it does become a nice supplement uh, for those who do, do need or do want extra work. And Dr. Brigitte, five minute warning. Yeah, I appreciate it, Renat. Uh, Locke and I have put our contact information up here. We'll leave the last couple minutes for questions. Um, please feel free to shout them out or send them in the, the chat. I don't know what the, the protocol is here for Dr. Martin. Yeah, so feel free. Um, you can, um, participants, you can go ahead and unmute yourselves or use the chat for any questions um, you have for the program. We're going to give it another 30 seconds or minute just in case anything comes in. But uh, for the applicants on the call, okay, this is great. Uh, for the applicants on the call, please feel free to email if we run out of time here. Um, shadowing opportunities for international graduates. Uh, if you have questions, if you are an international uh, graduate and you want to shadow, email Locke or myself and we'll push you along to the program coordinator who can better answer that question. I don't know how much shadowing is or isn't available uh, right now, but we can get you an answer, certainly. And then do we have current IMGs at the program uh, year graduation cutoff? Uh, both Locke and I have been involved in the recruitment process the last couple of years. Uh, to answer the second question first, there is no uh, year graduation formal cutoff. So that's not baked into our recruitment uh, criteria right now. Um, and then we do have U.S. IMGs at the program uh, at this time. Locke alluded to a couple people coming from uh, different countries. Felix is from Ghana. Uh, in the past, we've had uh, international medical grads who have gone to St. George's and more than one or two. It's not just sort of one one off. Um, so, yes, this is a relatively uh, IMG or international friendly uh, program. And then didactics via Zoom, I'll defer to uh, Academic Chief Locke on that one. Locke, you seeing the question here? I don't, I don't see the question. Uh, what's it's, the, what's can, the question? Can applicants attend didactics via Zoom? Uh, I think this uh, also like email me about this as well. Uh, I'd have to like uh, talk with the uh, of course, uh, the uh, our program against, but usually, if you're requesting it, then usually uh, you have opportunity to like 
you are zoom link and able to like uh, see our didactic as well if uh, requested ahead of time. Um, thank you all for the time. Thank you for being here. Uh, please feel free to reach out directly via email. And uh, good luck through the application season.